The more I learn, the more I realize how little I truly know. Thus, learning is infinite. My reason for this channel is to bring you along into my journey of learning things I find to be fun and interesting, while improving my communication skills and giving credit to those sources who inspired me to learn. After making three videos thus far, I am aware that I need to improve on all facets of communication, video making, and message delivery. To put it simply, my videos are boring. So I decided to read Talk Like Ted, The Nine Public Speaking Secrets of the World's Top Minds by Carmine Gallo. Public speaking is one of the most common fears people have, and YouTube is really a form of public speaking if you think about it. Talk Like Ted is divided into three parts, each describing three components of an interesting or inspiring presentation. According to Gallo and his extensive research on TED presentations, the most engaging presentations are emotional, novel, and memorable. So let's start with what makes a presentation emotional, and there are three components to that. The first is passion. What makes your heart sing? What is it about the presentation that you're connected to? What makes you inspired about it? Now, why does this work? Well, passion is somewhat contagious. The more enthusiastic you are, the more meaningful the connection to the topic you're presenting is to you and to others. Other people can see that passion. It seeps through from you to them. In fact, studies show that highly charismatic people affect lower charismatic people, bringing up their uh, comfortability, I guess. Now, also, the perceived passion you have towards a project is really important. It plays a critical role in your entrepreneurial success, and passionate business leaders are more creative, set higher goals, exhibit greater persistence, and record better company performance overall. Even when giving a business pitch, there is a direct correlation between perceived passion and the likelihood of having ideas funded. And in order to try to figure out what that passion is or try to discover your passion, some things Ted recommends is maybe accepting happiness as a choice or inviting more passionate people into your life. Now, not everyone benefits from searching for their passion. Maybe you're not in a specific place and time in your life where you can do that. You know, you, you work a nine to five and you have bills to pay and you have a family to take care of and getting rid of that isn't necessarily beneficial to your situation. But if you're able to find the, some time to yourself, maybe explore some different things, uh, try to figure out what you like and maybe it, you could start there um but definitely find something you enjoy doing next is storytelling be able to tell a story a story that reaches people's hearts and minds stories that illustrate illuminate and inspire your audience stories that are connected to the central theme of your presentation and stories that connect the audience on a personal and emotional level. Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, has some components of persuasion that are listed here in the book, as you can see, that the best stories have three things. They have credibility, evidence and data, and emotional appeal. And in order to tell in a more effective story to captivate your audience, there has to be far more emotion in your stories than evidence and or credibility. Now there are three simple effective types of stories you can tell. Personal stories, stories of other people such as friends or co-workers or whomever inspires you, or stories of brand successes, brands that you follow, brands that you enjoy, brand successes. Now the most effective way of delivering this information is to make concepts and ideas real and tangible, not so much hypotheticals. And you wanna avoid overused buzzwords and cliches, but you also wanna be able to appeal to the senses such as sight, sound, smell, touch, and hearing. And we'll talk about that into more detail later in the video. And last, have a conversation. 
present your information in a way that is comfortable with your audience. Something, it's like if you were talking with a friend. Now, this is something I deeply struggle with, but as the book explains, this is not natural. You have to practice relentlessly and internalize your content and gain your listener's trust. Now, the book describes an example from The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer that provides some more advice on how to improve this. So, for example, she suggests helping with planning. Ask people to help you with planning your presentation, either asking readers for suggestions or you as the audience. Also, explain or put out the bigger picture first and then the details later. And you want to simplify your explanations. I know I tend to use a lot of jargon, but I'm working on simplifying all of that. She also recommends seeking early feedback when you're practicing. Feedback from friends, family, professionals, and it helps with your work, simplifying your work. And the last thing is you want to rehearse, rehearse, and rehearse. Again, creativity thrives in diverse views, and it helps to gather a lot of people's information and their different inputs. But you have to put in the time. Your ideas are definitely worth the effort. But also, um, you want to make sure your verbal delivery matches the context and the narrative of your presentation. Now, my goal in my presentations or in these videos really is to inform and entertain, but mainly inform because I've never been good at entertaining people. So just inform in a way you're able to absorb the knowledge and hopefully influence you in, in at least one thing. Now, if you're presenting in a classroom or in front of an audience, the book does recommend doing some gestures, but keeping them limited. You know, use slight gestures with your hands, but use them sparingly. Use them at key moments to reinforce your messages. And keep your gestures within a specific power sphere, as they explain, but mainly within the center of your body. Most people, when they present, they, have, they fidget or they put their hands in their pockets. Now, the book recommends to fix those problems, to fix the fidgeting, the tapping, and the jingling of keys. You want to move with purpose. If you want to practice, you can film yourself and review your video afterwards to eliminate any mannerisms that you may have or are ineffective. Also, if you have the, pro the problem of standing rigid in one place during presentations, walk around the room a bit. Walk, move, and work the room. When filming, you want to walk out of frame and come back in. And if you're someone who keeps your hands in your pockets, keep them out of your pockets. Or maybe just one hand in your pockets and the other hand for giving out gestures. Next are the components for novelty. The first is you want to teach something new. Take a unique approach on your presentation. You can reveal new information packaged differently. The human brain loves novelty. Uh, the author suggests to bombard the brain with new experiences. Embrace new experiences, experience new events, people and places, and incorporate them into your presentations. Next. You want to deliver a jaw-dropping moment or an unexpected surprise. Something that's shocking, impressive, or surprising. Here you have Bill Gates releasing a ton of mosquitoes during his TED Talk. Now, this TED Talk, he was discussing the mortality rates amongst children and how malaria is a big um, cause of that. And he releases a bunch of mosquitoes to shock the audience. Now... These mosquitoes do not have malaria, but it's a great device. Emotionally charged events, such as this one, persist longer and are recalled with greater accuracy. So most people coming out of this presentation won't necessarily remember the details of what was said, but they definitely won't forget this moment. And there are five ways you can create an emotionally charged event, according to the author. You can do some props and demonstrations that emphasize the message or explain your presentation in simpler terms. You can show unexpected and shocking stats, 
that logic and emotion part used in Aristotle's components that we discussed earlier. And you make the numbers meaningful, memorable, and jaw-dropping by placing them in context that the audience can relate to. You can also use pictures, images, and videos that connects with the theme. Use a memorable headline or a soundbite, something that's short, provocative, and repeatable. And same as the previous points, you can tell personal stories. Great communicators are good storytellers, to repeat the previous component. The third component of novelty is to lighten up, have some sense of humor. It lowers defenses and the audience is more receptive and it makes you more likable. Also, the more you feel good, the better presentation you give out. Now there's five ways to add humor into your presentation. You can use anecdotes, observations, or personal stories. Uh, use anal analogies, there you go, and metaphors. Uh, comparisons pointing out similarities between two different things and it helps explain complex topics. You can use quotes directly from someone else uh, or videos uh, to take the pressure off of you to be funny. And you can also use photos to reinforce the key message that you want to give out. Now humor used in presentations should be carefully crafted and considered. What makes a presentation memorable? The first thing that the author observes is that presentation should be done within 18 to 20 minutes. That is long enough to be serious and short enough to hold people's attention. It has a clarifying effect and it brings discipline. Now, if you must create one that is longer, build in soft breaks. Simple explanations of complex topics gives the audience confidence in the speaker's mastery of the subjects. And to quote Einstein, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. In order to help shorten your presentation, the author suggests uh, the rule of three or the three story structure. People can remember three pieces of information really well. If you add more and retention falls considerably, dividing the presentation into three areas makes the material easy to remember. So how does this work? So here is the example that the author provides or a format you can use. The first is creating a Twitter friendly headline. What is the single overarching message you want to give to your customers to know at the end of the presentation? That'll be your headline. Next, support your headline with three key messages. As I stated, the human mind can only process three pieces of information in the short term and the messages must support the theme. And third, you want to reinforce these three messages with stories, stats, and examples. Add bullet points to each of your three supporting messages. In fact, the book is written in this three-story structure. It makes the information easy to absorb, especially when it's this type of information, when it's how-to guides or suggestions on giving better presentations. You can pick and choose which which points that you want to use for yourself and which points do you want to set aside for later. It's, it's very, it's well organized pretty much. And the last way to make your presentation memorable is to paint a mental picture. The brain craves a multi-sensory experience and the way to create a mental picture is to use all of the five senses such as taste, sight, smell, touch, and sound. Now, Gallo introduces this specific presentation into the book, Chris Jordan, turning powerful stats into art, because he does a really good idea of showing us his perspective on his presentation using stats. For example, here, these are all paper cups, and this is highlighted to show all of the paper cups that are consumed in airplanes and just simply disposed of. Next, he'll show you, as you'll see later, uh, paper cups that we use when uh, in coffee consumption. Hell, I'm holding a Starbucks cup here right now with me. And watching this presentation and holding these cups makes me realize how much of an impactful uh, waste that I'm making in the environment. It 
puts it into context really well without having to explain all of the words. And he's using this through sight, really. You know, he's using pictures in his slides, but he's using his own art. And watching this will make me remember his presentation with words and pictures a lot more than just either words or pictures. Other ways you can use your senses is to be able to use your voice in a way that maintains the audience's captivity. Again, I struggle with that a lot. My voice tends to be a lot monotone. I don't really tend to fluctuate it well. And I have to be careful on how I use my pitch or volume. Um, but I want to make sure to use concrete examples and use evocative and descriptive words. And you have to make your audience feel a specific way. Transport your audience to a different place entirely. As people remember information more vividly when more than one sense is stimulating. And in this, again, in Chris's presentation, he goes on further to talk about the prison system, all of these uniforms to highlight the American prison system, about one in four people incarcerated. This was back in 2008. If you look into the, if you actually, I do recommend watching this presentation on TED.com. He'll show you his different arts on the use of cigarettes, the prescription drugs that kill most people and Barbie dolls to show that sadly it's very common for young females graduating out of high school to have body modifications or to have uh, plastic surgery. So this is an excellent presentation. Um, forget my video, go and watch this for sure. Definitely. I recommend it. It'll be in the link below. Correction, the last component into what makes a presentation memorable really is to stay in your own lane. Most people can spot someone that's being fake. The author recommends you be authentic, open, and transparent with your audience. The goal of a presentation is to inspire the audience, move them, and encourage them to dream bigger. To give you a quote from the author himself. You have the ability to educate and electrify, informed, and inspire, but only if you believe in your ability to do so. Well, there you have it. The nine public speaking secrets of the world's top minds. One important note is that this book is not endorsed, sponsored, or authorized by Ted. But I think Gallo deserves all of the praise for his extensive research and giving us this information with his own unique approach. Ted has its own official book titled Ted Talks, if you want to check that one out. Personally, I think this book is a must buy. This video may not be the embodiment of what makes a great presentation. But this is a manual for myself moving forward. It has given me a structure to simplify the information I read and relay that information to you. I look forward to continuous improvement and hope to inspire at least one person with every video I put out. I appreciate you all for watching.